take a seat wherever you're at. If you're on the sides, come on in. Let's make the middle. Don't go against the walls. Come to the, come to the middle. Take a seat wherever you're at. Welcome to Risen Youth. So happy you're here. Find a seat. I know it looks a little different without the chairs, but it's beautiful. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Hey, 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 my name is Luke, and I'm so excited to be able to speak to you tonight. Could you, against the wall, just come on in? And yeah, I'm just so honored that we're going to be able to continue our series called Evangelism. We're on week two. And so last week, if you weren't here, my good friend Noel, he shared two important tips on what it means to be a good evangelist. And to be an evangelist basically means just to tell others about Jesus, just share your faith. And so first, we need to know the story of the gospel in order to tell others about God. And second, we need to know the person of the gospel, Jesus, to go out and tell others about our faith. And one of the best ways that we get to know Jesus is in moments just like this, prayer, worship, teaching. These are great places to learn and grow your faith. So our series Evangelism is it's just really focused on equipping you, preparing you, and just uplifting your confidence to be able to go out and just share Jesus with the world. And my hope is that tonight you'd walk away just with a new perspective on how important it is to share our faith. Because that's probably our greatest responsibility as Christians is to go out and tell others about Jesus. And to be super clear and so that we're on the same page, Jesus is the Son of God. He came from heaven to earth to restore mankind. He came to bridge the gap between us and God so that we would have full unity with him forever. And so tonight we're going to unpack one of my favorite analogies that Jesus shares with his followers. And to give a little context, Jesus is talking in probably in one of his most famous series called the Sermon on the Mount. And I did a little research and there's apparently about 20,000 people that Jesus was talking to. It was crazy. The Bible says that there was a great crowd. And if you're taking notes tonight, which I would encourage you to do, because it's really hard to remember anything if you don't write it down. I learned that from experience. I would encourage all of you, pull out your phone, pull out your journal, whatever. Go to your notes app, take some notes, write whatever you think interesting that I say is. Hopefully it's a lot down. It'll be cool. Okay, we're going to dive right into Matthew 5, 14 to 16. This is our text for tonight. And, it's, and Jesus says to all these people listening, he says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be. Be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, giving light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. All right, let's break this down. Verse 14, the first bit. You are the light of the world. A town that is built on a hill cannot be hidden. So upon initial impression, that seems, that seems pretty simple. It's pretty short. Cool. You're light. If you're built up high, everybody can see you. It makes sense. But I want to share three takeaways that I think we can get from the scripture that, are, that, that will really encourage and challenge us to evangelize and share the good news of Jesus. Point number one to write down if you're taking notes. The purpose of light is to illuminate darkness. The purpose of light is to come in and shine and brighten any darkness. And I remember being a little kid, and I want to confess something to you, and I'm actually hoping to find some, like, relatability in this because I'm kind of insecure about it. But I, was, I remember playing as a kid. I'd go downstairs in my basement, and after I was done playing mini sticks or video games or whatever, right, that moment when you turn that light switch off and run up your stairs as fast as you can, like, bro, I don't know if it was just me, but, like, I thought something was going to grab my feet. Like, I was going to get permanently pulled into darkness. That was probably one of the scariest moments as a kid. And... When I was on, when the, sorry, when the light was on, I felt safe. But the minute that light went off, I felt like I was in a horror movie. And I say this to say that light overpowers darkness. Any form of light overpowers darkness. And in the same way, Jesus came to this earth to defeat darkness, to get victory over the sin and the evil and all the bad stuff in this world. And darkness tried really hard to consume Jesus or to like extinguish him, but it couldn't. And, and the same thing is true today, that darkness and evil and sin, it comes for you and it tries to smother your light. It tries to put your light off. It tries to extinguish your truth and, and your relationship with God. 
And, and here's a really cool promise from God talking about all of this. It comes from John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So here Jesus is saying, I'm the light of the world. If you follow me, you'll never walk in that darkness because I have come to over, over, I've overcame it. I have victory in that. And there's no power, there's no foothold, there's no stronghold, there's nothing. There's no dominion or darkness that Jesus does not reign above it all. Because he is the light of the world. So he came into this dark world full of mess to restore us and to bring it light. And that ties into point number two. Is we as Christians, we have a responsibility to shine. Christians have a responsibility to shine. So Jesus continues with this analogy in verse 15 and 16. And he says, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And at this point in history, there are two main ways to get light. You get light through fire, or you get light through what was called these oil lamps. And so here Jesus is talking about these oil lamps. You light these oil lamps, and once it got dark after the dinner time, you light this lamp, and it would distribute light across the room so you could see in your house. And what was important is placement. Where you put these lamps would be really critical because you wouldn't want to put it in a place that didn't give the whole room much light. And the beautiful thing is that God does the same thing with Christians. He puts us in these optimal places to shine. These optimal places and and opportunity to, to, to reach others and to shine for him. Maybe this looks like on your sports team. You might be the only Christian. That is an optimal opportunity to shine for the Lord. Maybe it's your family where your brother or sister or your father and mo- or mother don't know the Lord. That is an optimal placement. God has blessed you with those people to minister to them, to showcase his love, his glory to them. And we can look at that as a really cool opportunity. And so this is the point of Jesus. He says, he says why would anybody light this oil lamp and cover it? Why would anybody, like, hide their light? Why would they put a basket over it? And, they, and Jesus says they would not. You see, the light of the lamp in the story represents the light that we as Christians have. It's not meant to be hidden. It's meant to shine. It's meant to just, like, brighten the world that we are in. So to be really simple, Christians are the lamps. And we have a responsibility to shine and to not be hidden. Our light is meant to illuminate the dark world. It's, our light is meant to shine on people who are far from the Lord. So how do we shine? How do we be the light of the world? And I would say number one is to be countercultural. We want to go against culture. Culture is pushing one way. We want to shine the other way. We live in a dark world that's full of lies and confusion. And, 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 and God's word tells us specifically in Romans 13 verse 12. It says, cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. So throw off the way of culture, throw off the way of of darkness, and instead put on my armor, put on the armor of light. Where people may be chasing after physical pleasure or money or clout or fame, God says, God calls us to live in a different way. He says, put on my armor, put on my armor of light. Live in my, walk in my ways. Number two, be kind. We can shine to the world by being kind. In Romans it says that it, it, it is God's kindness that leads to repentance. It's God's kindness that causes people's hearts to change. And in the same way, when we are kind to others, it, it causes them to be drawn into Christ. It causes them to, to, to be curious about what we live, why we live the way that we do, what we believe in. Third, we can be bold. And we just finished our series on Daniel called Boldness. We walk through Daniel and how he lived this crazy life and had to be bold in all these different situations. And I would say there's two main ways to be bold, to shine our light. The first is to say no. You see, you're at a really, really important age in your life where there's going to be a lot of new opportunity, a lot of new experience, a lot of new temptation, and just, and just things thrown your way. And can I just say that your no is, is, is oftentimes more important than your, net, your yes. You're going to have people who you think are your friends say, hey, come try this. Come do this. It's cool. It's cool. It's popular. Your no is going to be really, really important in those moments. Whether that be going to parties that make you feel uncomfortable, saying no to lust, saying no to temptations to to go into drugs or go down that path, your no is going to be really important and you need to be bold. And when you actually say no, you shine your light. And you say, hey, I stand for Christ. I have the armor of the light. 
Second way we can say, say be bold and shine is to tell others about Jesus. Evangelize, share. And I understand that it's hard sometimes. It feels scary and awkward to tell others about your faith. I, I've been there. And one of my verses that really encouraged me and, and helped me find breakthrough, and I hope that it will for you too, is Luke 12, verse 12. And it says that the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what needs to be said. So in those moments or those conversations, when you're like, ah, what do I say? I, I, I'm lost. It says that the Holy Spirit will come. He will prompt you. He will teach you. He will tell you what to say. And you will not do it alone. And there's so many more ways to shine for the Lord. Maybe it's just encouragement. Just saying to your friend, hey, I see this in you. You're really, you're really awesome. Maybe it's just giving a compliment. Perhaps it's inviting someone who you see sit alone every single lunch. Come, come be a part of my friend group. That's all shining for the Lord. Maybe it's showing gratitude, going home to your mom and saying, hey, you know what, mom? Thanks for dinner tonight. Those are all ways that we get to shine for the Lord. But in order to shine, friends, we need Jesus. And this ties into, into my last point of tonight. That all light requires a power source. All light requires a power source. And, and, and we know this. For any light to function, it needs to be plugged in. It needs to have a source of electricity or current. And in the same way, we all need to be connected to Christ. Christians need the power source of Christ. I want to ask you right now, what is your power source? And I know sometimes on stage we ask these questions and it's like, oh, cool. I want you to think about it. What is your power source? Where are you getting energy from? Where are you deriving your strength from? Where are you maybe getting value from? And can I say, maybe it's, maybe it's approval. Maybe it's like, oh, you need people to say all the time, wow, good job. You need, you need to be recognized. Maybe you, get, maybe you need the power source of money and you've just been grinding and putting your head down and you need the money. That's your power source. It keeps, keeps fueling that fire. Maybe it's your relationship and you need your boyfriend or girlfriend to be happy and you're like, oh, if they're happy, then I'll be happy. That's my power source. Can I just say that any source that is not Jesus is not sustainable and it's not life-giving. Anything that you get energy or strength from or value from that is not from Jesus is, will not be sustainable. It will not be fruitful. It will just be temporary and it will fade away. And my parents, they're, they're both from Africa. If you didn't know, now you do. And I say that I'm African, even though I was born here. Kind of funny, kind of weird. But I've, I've been lucky to travel there a few times. And I remember one time we went to Africa and we stayed at this, this like really, really bad hotel, if I'm honest. It wasn't great. But the good thing about it is there was this one spot where you could get Wi-Fi. And at, at the time, not that many hotels in Africa have Wi-Fi. So I remember we, we went, what, what, what would happen is you would just see all the hotel guests come to this certain spot to get Wi-Fi. Every time, anytime you wanted a connection to go on Instagram, text, Snapchat, whatever, you'd go to the spot for Wi-Fi. And I remember sitting there and I thought, wow, this is a really good picture for Christ, is that we as Christians, we need to keep coming back to Christ. We need to keep coming back to the power source, the Wi-Fi, the spot where there's a connection, because that is when we are allowed, we get the access to live in a powerful and bold way. And the truth is that we as Christians, we live on God's strength and he is our power source. And as I close, I want, I want to leave you with this. It comes from Acts chapter 13, verse 47. It says, for the Lord gave this command when he said, I have made you a light to the Gentiles to bring salvation to the corners of the earth. And God's, God's saying here, look, I have made each of you a light. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, which are the people who don't know me. I have made you a light for the people living in darkness, the people living far from me. That's who I've made you a light. And I've made you a light to bring salvation to the corners of the earth. And I remember when I read this verse at first, I was like, oh, that's sick. Corners of the earth, far away from me. That's missionaries. Don't get me wrong. Missionaries are sick. But what I think God is trying to say is we all have corners in our world. We all have corners in our lives whether that be people, situations, circumstances, that where there's not light, where there's currently darkness, and there's currently a need for Jesus. And right here, it's in Acts 30, 13, verse 47. This is our evangelism encouragement. I have made you all, I've made every single one of you a light to the Gentiles to bring salvation. That means I have made you a light to go and tell others about Jesus, to go and show others Jesus. And I, and I want to emphasize something, that that these corners, 
They may just be a sibling. They might just be a parent. They might be someone who, 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 who's just as far from God. Whether that be your coach or your teacher, that's a corner. That's a corner in your life. Whether that be your best friend. For me, my two best friends, one's atheist and one's Muslim. That's a corner of my life. And I know that we all have these people where we need to be a light to. We need to show salvation. And it's in these circumstances that God says, shine. Shine for me. Shine brightly. Shine radiantly. Shine vibrantly. And I, and I want to end, end my message with this analogy. And I want to be just like really honest. I, I, I didn't come up with this. It's not my original idea. But I saw it a long time ago when I was about your age. And it really stuck with me. And I, and I think if, if you haven't heard anything tonight, I want you just to catch this. I think it's beautiful. I'm going to ask you all just to put your phones away. Just be quiet. And just so we're not spooked or startled, we're going to turn off all the lights. All right, you can hit the lights off. And, and I, I want you to get this. I just, want, I just want to pause here. I don't want to be rushed. This is, what the, this is what people's lives look like. This is what the world looks like. It's dark. It's uncomfortable. It's eerie. It's heavy. And, and, I, and I want this to sink in and really soak in. This is, this is some of our friends. This is some of our family members. This is some of our teachers, coaches, like cousins. This is what they live like. They don't have the light of Christ. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He tells us, be a light. He tells us, shine for me. Bring salvation to the corners of the earth. And, and this is what Jesus came to save us from. So we would no longer have to live like this, live in this darkness, this heaviness, this sin. He came to have victory over every temptation, every bit of darkness and evil. And, and this is what happens. He tells us to shine, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to shine one at a time. We're going to shine. And this is what happens. Look what I said. Light illuminates darkness. The room is so dark. Right? And one person shines and suddenly the room gets brighter. I'm going to ask all the leaders, pull out your phone. Just the leaders for now. Just the leaders for now. I want this to sink in. Just the leaders. Students, you have your turn. Leaders, pull out your flashlights. Look what happens when a few of us shine. The world gets brighter. Jesus gets shared. This is what happens when you evangelize. More people get touched. More lives get changed. All right, everybody, you can pull out your phones. Pull out your flashlights. This is what happens one at a time. We touch the world. We share we tell others about Jesus. We say, hey, this is the truth. This is the life. Come and follow me. And I want this picture just to just pause you for a moment. This, this, is, this is what heaven looks like. All lit up, all beautiful, all good. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never live or never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And, and, I, and, I, and I want this to be really clear. I want everyone to take their hand and just cover their flashlight. Just cover it. So don't put it on the floor, just cover it. Look, I want you to get this picture. The light's still shining, but we're hiding it. Jesus says, Jesus says, who lights, who lights a lamp and puts a bowl over it? And this is what happens when we hide our light. This is what happens when we don't share. Hey, hey, this is what happens when we don't share Jesus to the world. The world is still in darkness. People still don't know the Lord. So if you hear my cry tonight, it's just to go and spread. Go and make disciples of all nations. Go and just share the good news, the gospel with your friends, with your family, with your teachers. God commands us to do it, guys. God commands us to bring light to the Gentiles. All right, we can put our flashlights away, turn them off, and we can get the lights back on. And, may, and maybe you're in the room right now. Maybe you're in the room right now, and that's what your life looks like currently. It's dark. It's heavy. And I just want to invite you. There is so much more beauty with Jesus. He doesn't promise you that there won't be any darkness because there still will be. Jesus says the world will hate you because it hated me. Just because you choose to follow the Lord doesn't mean that your life is beautiful and perfect and it's always shining. There's still going to be darkness. But Jesus says, I will walk with you. You will never be alone. And I am the light of the world. And maybe, you've, maybe you have found the power source. Maybe you have been plugged in to Jesus, but you've wandered off. And I got this picture today as I was writing that when you try to plug like your iPhone in and you just stretch it and you stretch it and you stretch it, it eventually comes out of the wall. When we live in a way that we live on our own strength, we derive our own power from, by ourselves, we go further and further away from God and eventually we're like, ah, kind of got unplugged. I'm doing it on my own. 
And the truth is that God, God, God loves and he always forgives and he says, hey, just come back. I have unlimited power. I, have the, I am the source of hope, of peace, of joy, of patience, of kindness in, 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 in your life. That's me. Just come back to me. So we're going to end today with two prayers. And the first prayer is for those who may still be living in that darkness. For those who have not yet accepted to walk into the light, walk into the new life that Jesus has to offer. And the second is for those who want to just come home, who want to just replug, who want to just come and say, hey God, you know what, I've been living in a way where you're not first place. And I'm going to make that choice to, to live and walk in your ways, God, to share light to the world. So I'm going to ask everyone to close your eyes and bow your heads. So for the first prayer, for those of us who are like, I want to live in the light. The darkness is heavy, it's scary, it's burdensome. Jesus, I want you. On the count of three, would you just raise your hand so I know who I'm praying with? Three, two, one. Raise your hand. And I'm going to ask everybody to repeat after me so they're not singled out. Jesus, I choose the light. Thank you for coming and getting victory over the darkness. I believe that you died for my sins and rose again to forgive me. I'm excited for a new life with you. And the second prayer I want to pray is for those of you who maybe have gone a little far, have been finding that power source from money, relationships, just words, just anything other than the Lord. And I just want to create a moment and a space to just raise your hand and say, hey, I'm coming back. So on the count of three, if you just like to come home, just come back to Jesus' arms, his family. In three two, one, raise your hand. And this prayer, you don't have to pray, pray after me. I'm just going to pray it over all of you with your hands up. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are a God of forgiveness. You're a God of abundance and you're a God of overflow. Thank you that you are our source, Jesus. You are our source of life, Lord, our source of light. God, I pray that these students, Lord, would just come back to an, a fresh relationship, God, that it just, it would just flourish, Jesus, with your love and your presence, God. I pray over all of us here in the room, Jesus, that we would be mighty evangelists, Lord, that we would be bold, God, that we would have courage and bravery to share, God, that we would let our light shine with a confidence, not in our own skills, God, but in you. God, I pray that as we light up this world, God, that we would experience more of your light, God. We would experience more of your love. We'd experience more of your presence, God. Our hearts are hungry for you. And Jesus, I just thank you, God, that we can gather. I thank you that you are the light of the world, God, that you came and that whoever believes in you shall never walk in darkness. And I pray, God, over any areas in these students' hearts of darkness, God, whether that be depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, God, just the hardships and the heartaches, God, we just, we just pray your name over those situations, over those feelings, God. God, for the corners of our world, Jesus, for the friends, for the families, for the teachers, for those who do not yet know you, God, those still living in darkness, would they be open? Would they be sensitive to your spirit? And Lord, as we get back into this time of worship, Jesus, would it just be holy? Would it just be pure? God, we love you and we praise you. In your mighty name, I pray. Amen.